With each new volume, the look of the show got enhanced in some way. Volume 1 to 2 got rid of the shadow people, made Blake's ears look much better, smoothed out the character models and the non-action animation, and made the environments more varied. Volume 2 to 3 did the same as the previous transition with the characters and also made them more vibrant, and made the animation for the non-action scenes really nice. The early action scenes were not that great, but I would attribute that to how many action scenes wound up happening. Volume 3 to 4 had a major change to the look of the show. People call the change in the look of the series as a new animation style. This just doesn't make sense to me. When I think of animation style, I think of the way in which an animator animates a scene. When I think of the new look, I call it a minor change in art style and character design. If you want to get a look into the animation industry, go no further than the Canapa effect on YouTube. He has talked about animation studios, animators, and more. The one you should watch is the video in which he talks about Pokemon Sun and Moon and its changes to its look in animation. Luckily, this minor change in art style is consistent with what came before. Character designs retains elements of what came before as well, but not all characters wound up looking good. Mercury and Ironwood being the examples. Mercury looks freaking weird. He is supposed to be the cool character out of everyone, but man, he did not transition well. Ironwood is also not straight and tall anymore. He has been shrunken and widened. If you want to understand why I call it a change in art style, just look at the recent Tales and Ultima Ninja Storm games and compare that with how Ruby has looked over the years. Ruby for the first three seasons looked like it came from a Tales game. Now it looks like it came from the Ninja Storm series. I wasn't a fan of the way the Ninja Storm games looked, but I liked Tales of Exilia. That said, I can't deny how good the show can now look. Light and Shadow is so much better compared to the previous seasons. Lights have a bigger visual effect on environments and characters, and the shadows of characters aren't just a somewhat darkened spot below their feet. The shadows actually cast what their models look like. It's so good that we get this. Look at this. It looks so beautiful. Then, there are the details for the background. Environments are so much more vibrant with color. Just look at this water. Check this out. Do the same for this scene. That is literally my background for my desktop. It's freaking beautiful. Seriously, I love the look of every scene that takes place at night. Because that is when the new look of the show really shines. The characters are even much more smoothed out than they were in previous seasons. Just look at Ranger's legs here. Yeah, I'm complimenting the legs and I'm not a leg man. I think. But again, not everyone made the transition smoothly. I'm not worried though. They can enhance and make things better between seasons like they have been. Although, I don't know why they needed to make these changes. They didn't have to do this. The audience was fine with how the show looked before. This is how it was started and they kept making it better with each new season. Going back to character design, I actually do not fully like the way Blake's cat ears are now. I like the way they looked in Volume 2 more. I didn't like how flat your ears were compared to Volume 2, and I like the inner ears colors of light gray. I do have to admit that it is awesome seeing Blake's ears move. It adds so much more personality in her animation. I do have to mention something that I had noticed in the character designs while editing the story analysis video. There are a lot of characters wearing coats and jackets. Blake, Yane, Hazel, Ironwood, and Tyrion for a moment. I think the character designer got a hard on for coat tails. And the characters I just mentioned aren't the only ones that have clothing tails as a part of their outfit. That is too many characters with a similar design choice put into them. Ironwood has a single tail and the rest have split tails. The split ones are long too. I remember how Nora's original design had a bigger bow and it was shrunken in order to be easier to animate with. I can't imagine how hard or annoying it must be to animate these characters with this design in a complex scene. Hell, did you notice that Tyrion's tail ripped through his coat? How bad is this when the design of a character's jacket doesn't fully accommodate the design of the character? I really want to take a pair of scissors in order to cut off some of the tails. Ironwoods is fine though. 
I also have to mention that the character designs of this volume added a lot more variation to the eyes. By that I mean, every male character had narrow type eyes and most female characters had wide eyes. This volume widened out most of the male cast's eyes, depending on age and visual aesthetic. I believe it was in the Pokemon Sun and Moon video that the Canapa effect explained that the way in which something can be animated partially depends on its design. So the animation style probably had a change due to the new way in which characters are made. One of the changes that I saw was more squash and stretch. I understand that it is one of the 12 principles of animation, but I don't think it needs to be used as extremely as it was. I did go back and check if squash and stretch was used in the previous volumes, especially for the fight scenes. I found that it was, but it was used in minor ways. It was mainly used on the weapons, and characters got a minor stretch or a blur effect was placed on their models. I think this is why the jumping looks off for Volume 4. It may be something that I need to get used to. I just hope that the action doesn't get too cartoony because of this. I think this greater detail in characters is why the animation of most of the characters during the action scenes didn't work. Before, we had simple models and a showcase of simple and complex movement in almost every action scene. In this volume, we got more complex models and mainly a showcase of simple movement in the action scenes. Again, Tyrion vs. Crow had much better and complex movement in its characters that was similar to how things were in the previous volumes. So, these models can still be moved in similar ways that we have become accustomed to over three seasons but it looks like it will be extremely rare. It seems to me that people believe that Maya is completely new to the production of the show. That is not true. Maya has been a part of the series from the very beginning. Almost every model and asset for volumes 1 through 3 was made in Maya. It was just that the models and other assets were imported into Poser in order to create and render the scenes. Maya this time around is not only where the models are created, but also takes the place of Poser in the production. I don't know if Poser could do the same as what Maya did for the current volume. So overall, I'm okay with how the show now looks, but I'm taking it with a grain of salt. That's because of how the action animation turned out for the volume, but if they continue the trend of the series by making things much more smoothed out and better animated, like it did with the non-action scenes, I think things will turn out fine. Now I ask you, what do you think about the new look for the show? Does it add more than it takes away? What are your favorite moments in the visuals of the series? You can answer these in the comments below or message me your responses on Tumblr. Dude, Ren, you're looking good. No wonder people became Ren sexuals this volume.